Thank you all, and welcome to Rafi Lounge. And uh, I would appreciate if right now everybody a little bit have a focus about what we're doing here and what's happening tonight and why I am behind the mic right now, and I will explain you that too. So um, uh, first of all, Rafi Lounge, we started it a year and a bit before it was in August 23rd, 2020, in the midst of the pandemic, and the purpose was I wanted to bring to everybody my travels and spiritual experiences uh, that I've uh, experienced through my life into one place that is an outdoor experience and people can still enjoy each other yet be safe and at the same time also uh, experience different traveling experience and I was trying to bring most of them here. So about a month ago, I realized that I know now after one year what exactly we want and we um, uh, asked the members that we're going to have a two weeks break and they were also kind to wait for two weeks to understand that it's going to be a bit different and then we reopen. So just in few words, uh, what we reopen here is Rafi Lounge and we have two sides to it. We have the side that we all hear right now, this side of the balcony that um, called the Balonese Garden and it's all Bali style and we had uh, many people helping us. Uh, include Angel, the chef that was with me, and Christian, and we were for two weeks carrying everything and pushing everything, and then Larissa, my friend, who helped me with the design, with Tara Design, that I need to say thank you to. And um, at the same time, uh, what we wanted to create here is more cozy place where people can sit and enjoy the time, and on the other side, it's called the Butterfly Zen Gardens. So everybody probably understands Zen is very clean, and that's why it's Zen, but why is it Butterfly Zen? Because while I was building it, I was talking to a uh, very nice gentleman. His name is Norm. He's the owner of the building. And he told me about the monarchs uh, butterflies that they distinguishing from the world um, because of some temperature change. And uh, then I started to investigate it. And I, um, I realized that there's a thing, and it's a small story, and then we start with everything. It's a small story about the, um, the butterfly, the monarchs butterfly. They, they love the most something that's called milkweeds. It's a special flowers. So um, we, when you get them, they can really multiply themselves. They put their cocoons on it. So I ordered 100 of them that are going to probably arrive in a week or so, and that's going to be there. So people that will experience sound bath and different things on that side probably going to see tons of butterflies around, and that's what I wanted to create. So that's the Rafi Lounge. And um, uh, the city was uh, also kind enough to give us some TUPs, temporary use permits, so we can really use it for events as today. Um, and why I'm on the mic, because um, one of our dear members, Candice, is here, she's here with us. She has something called Lux Media, and she uh, promotes different uh, podcasts. So we decided that we should open one here since we meet a lot of interesting people. So we launched it actually on Wednesday when the Lama of Tibet was here. And uh, everybody came and asked questions, and it was an amazing event. And I'm going to just tell you quickly what we're doing every day, and from there we're going to go into everything else. Mondays we close, Tuesdays all we have Mashi with a deliberate experience, Wednesday evening it's the wellness, so we're going to have all my teachers from around the world teaching via Zoom on the screen, and Thursdays we have movie nights, on Fridays we have karaoke night that used to be in Malibu for many years, so it's coming back here, on Saturdays it's Tulum and Salsa nights, and on Sundays reggae nights or special performances as for tonight, and then another edition that's going to start from tonight, from, uh, from Wednesday, is uh, one of our new member and staff member. Uh, her name is Karen. She's at the door. She greeted everybody. She's a Reiki master. So every night, 10 o'clock, unlike any other place that you're closing, here we're going to close with a good note, and she's going to give us a 15 minutes Reiki with a sound bath before everybody heading home with uh, uh, affirmations and motivation for the next day. So that's Rafi Lounge, and that's what we're trying to create. Now, with that, I want to welcome a good, good friend, a dear friend of mine, and an amazing person, and a very uh, well-recognized um, uh, in the music industry, Mr. Louise Price. <laughs> now, a few words about Louise Price, and um, what I want to say, and then we will start with some Q&As for about 10, 15 minutes, and then we go through the show for the night. That is amazing, and you're going to see what he's all about. But Louis Price, as you know, he was uh, the former lead singer of The Temptations, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that, a little about the Motown times and how he got into it and what his future look like right now. So um, 
Luis, thank you for coming and uh, joining us tonight. Glad to be here. So glad to be here. Thank you for having me, uh, Rafi. Uh, um, I'm looking forward to this whole um, event, this, this whole wonderful trip that I'm on this path with you because, um, you know, if you need me, just call me. And uh, I'll be there. <laughs> Stuff like that, you know. I'm not going to continue because then. Right. <laughs> Last time they left when I sang with you. <laughs> oh, wow. So, um, so no, I'm good. I'm good. So man. I want to I wanna hear, Luis. I want to hear, first of all, what was your first experience? Was it the temptation right from the beginning? Or did you sing in another band and then suddenly one day you had a phone call? Tell me a little bit about that. Well, <clears throat> my first experience is, is my experience with my family. My mom and uh, my whole family are singers. In fact, uh, in order to be in my family, it was required that you had to be able to sing. And if you couldn't sing by the age of two, they would <laughs> put you up for adoption. <laughs> so I wanted to be with my family. And so I was very fortunate to be blessed with a talent, as most of my family uh, are. And um, my mom is a great singer. My father, all his family, they sang. My uncle, uh, uh, his uncle Rebut, he's... He was the lead singer of the Soul Stirrers. And uh, in fact, if you look it up in history, you'll find that he influenced Sam Cooke. And if you listen to him, you, you kind of get an understanding why Sam Cooke sounds the way he sounds. I'm just saying. <laughs> OK? And then one thing that was good, I, I was looking at TV, and I saw where the Temptations were um, put into the Hall of Fame. And David Ruffin got up to the mic, which I didn't know this. And he got up to the mic and he said, first, I want to give thanks to R.H. Harris. That was Reba Harris. And I said, I didn't know David knew my uncle. And that was, he was influenced wow. by him. So, wow. yeah, so I'm good. So you, so you um, at what year and how did it happen? I want to hear the story. How did you got recruited into the Temptations? Well, <clears throat> I'm going to try to make this real short. Um, but it's going to be long. <laughs> But I'm going to start off with the intent to make it short. Um, I was downtown at Jerry Butler Studio in Chicago <clears throat> with a bunch of my friends. We all were singers, and we had signed a record contract with, in the Jerry Butler's uh, studio. And uh, we, in fact, I stayed in college close to Chicago because we had signed the contract, and we thought we was going to be stars. But anyway, I went to college, <clears throat> came back, and um, graduated from college and came back to Jerry's studio. And while I was there this particular day, Jerry's manager said, Lewis, the impressions need a lead singer. And my guys who were with me, they said, oh, man, you can't sing with the impression. I said, what are you talking about? I can sing with anybody, because I was you know, cocky. <laughs> so anyway, I said, well, OK, I'll tell you what. Make an audition for it, and I'll go, and I'll show you. So they made an audition for me uh, with the impression. So I went down, and I. I auditioned for the impressions. I'm not going to tell you all the particulars. But then they wanted me to sing with him. So they, they said, OK, he's in the group. And I was in the group, but I, <clears throat> I saw that it wasn't what I wanted to do. you know. And, and so I was working with the choir in the school my first year teaching. And I wanted to stay with the kids who I, were working, I was working with, because it just wasn't what I wanted to do with the, with the impressions. And so I asked them kindly to let me just bow out. And fortunately, they did. A year later, they went to uh, California, and they get picked up another lead singer, and they went to California, and they were singing at the Troubadour. And Melvin, that's the bass singer, he went to see them. So when he saw them, he asked them, he said, look, man, we're looking for a lead singer. You know, we have a nationwide you know, uh, search for a lead singer, The Temptation. Do you know anybody? And fortunately, I ended that relationship well because they say, yeah, we know this guy named Lewis Price. So here I am way in, in Chicago, and this is happening in California. Um, so anyway, they gave him my information, and he called me. All right, he called me, and I didn't believe it was him. And my family is a joking family, so my auntie, I wasn't even at home. So he called me at my auntie's house. My auntie got the phone. She said, Lewis, it's your brother. He's acting crazy, you know, because my family's a joking family. So 
when I got on the phone, it was a deep voice and it rattled me. Hello. And I said, wow, my brother's good. <laughs> so anyway, he said, I'm David English of the, Impre of the Temptation. And uh, I said, yeah, right. And I was playing with my cousin and I was playing Donald Duck. So I said, <laughs> so when he got on the phone and said that, I said, yeah, and I'm Donald Duck. I said, I'm Donald <laughs> Duck. You're right. So he's, he thought I was crazy. So after a while, he referenced the impressions guy name. And then I felt so bad. I was I was so embarrassed because I said, "Oh God, I'm acting like a fool." This guy wants me to audition for the Temptation. He thinks he thinks I'm crazy. So anyway, we got through it, and he asked me to send a picture, and a, you know, a little picture and some information about me and some songs. And I wasn't from Hollywood, so I didn't have the eight by ten and the glossy, you know, the glossy picture and the resume and the bio. So what I did, I had a picture of a friend of mine. And we were, we had our hands around each, you know, hands around each other. We were posing. So I cut the picture in half, and so I sent them a picture of me with an arm with no body on it, you know. And so I sent that picture, and I sent some songs, and the rest is history. They called me. They kept saying, "Lewis is down to eight. Lewis is down to seven. Lewis is down to five. Lewis is down to four. And I didn't believe it because I started not to send the tape in because I was disappointed with it, right? And somebody just said, "Just send it in." I said, "Okay, I have nothing to lose." So I sent it in, and he said, "Lou." We want you to come to California to be with the Temptations. Wow. How long have you been with them? I was I was with them from 77 to like 80. Wow. Yeah. And you had another band that you were a Yeah. Part of. Okay. After I left the Temps, uh, we performed at the London Palladium in London with the Temptations. Melvin had gotten shot. And uh, yeah, this, this, this singing group stuff is dangerous. <laughs> Melvin had gotten shot. And so four of the Temptations had to go to England. So we performed in England and we performed at the London Palladium. While I was performing there, the, the drifters came. And when they found out that I left the Temps, they called me because they were so impressed with the show that they had seen me do with the Temptations in London. Amazing. So two of the main Motown. So you were part of the Motown making. Well, drifters weren't with Motown, but they were, um, they were instrumental in That's really right. preparing the road for all these groups that came behind him. In fact, I met Johnny Moore under the boardwalk. I met him and I met Benny King, which Benny King turned out to be one of my best friends, one of the nicest guys in the world. Wow. Yeah. So um, with that said, what is the future Intel? I mean, obviously we know many years ahead and what are you doing these days? Well, first I'm still dodging COVID and I'm doing pretty cool so far. And I want everybody to be safe, you know, um, Take care of yourself, you know, be healthy and get some of them herbs, not to smoke the herbs. I ain't saying that, <laughs> but I'm saying get <laughs> well, whatever you do. I mean, it's almost legal, right? Yes. But it's anyway, legal. I'm not promoting it <laughs> not at all. <laughs> um, but um, I um, am working excitingly on a new album and I'm really excited about it. We got some great stuff. I went into the studio, and I got to mention Jackson Brown, because Jackson Brown is instrumental in me getting this ball rolling. Jackson Brown, a great, great guy, great entertainer, great singer. And I always have to give, you know, um, give him a, a tip of my hat, because he said, Lewis, come on, I'll help you. Let's get it going. So with the help of Jackson Brown and a lot of my great friends here in my band, Dale and Xavier, and, and we are doing an album. And it's, I'm excited about it, and it's going to be great. It's going to be a smash. It's, it's happening, man, I'm telling you. <laughs> and when should we expect it? Um, um, after the new year, after January, because we just started on it. So um, excited about it. I'm, I'm asked to go to London uh, because there was a musical written by a lady named Faye Treadwell, and, uh, and the Drifters, because she owned the Drifters. So they did a musical about her and the Drifters. And I kind of contributed in, in giving people information about how she was and my experience with the Drifters. And they asked me to come over to London to uh, be at the premiere. So that's exciting. So yeah. talking about Faye, I want to talk about your Faye. Yeah. Um, I've been watching you, and you've been, we've been friends, friends now for quite a while. And I see this interaction between you and your wife, Faye. And it's one of the most beautiful things I've seen. And, and you know, I like, I like romantic moments. And every time I see you, I see romantic moments and I see people that support each other. And um, I want maybe just one advice from you as somebody who has been uh, married so successfully as I see and then so beautifully. One advice that you can tell the people today, what does it take to keep romance going? Don't get married three times. 
no, no, just so teasing. So half of them need to leave. <laughs> I know, someone got to leave. Right? No, 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 I'm just teasing. Uh, <clears throat> you know, you have to learn how to forgive and not think that everything has to be your way. Because if you want everything your way, you're going to always be disappointed. So if you're, if you're forgiving, if you're uh, unselfish, you know, if you're caring and considerate, and if you have integrity... I think it'll give you a good chance to make it. So you don't like the song, I did it my way. I did it my way. We, we did it our way, <laughs> Faye and I. Your way. And plus, she's just, uh, I mean, she's just a fantastic lady. I'm blessed to have her in my life. Um, she, makes, she makes me whole. And an artist. <clears throat> yeah. And she's, she's an, an artist. artist. She's a, a producer. She's a director. She's a writer. She's a singer. She's a everythinger. <laughs> she does everything. Amazing. Yeah. So... Last question is, where can they find you? Obviously, today we're up for a treat. And uh, before that even, we, we, called, we decided to call this uh, night uh, Motown Memories and More. Yes. So obviously, we're going to go beyond the temptation, beyond the drifter, beyond those things, right? Yes, we're going to do a lot of stuff. We're going to do some Motown songs. We're going to do some songs that I love. We're going to do some songs that I don't love, but I think you might like it. <laughs> so I'm, in, I'm unselfish, remember? <laughs> and... Uh, um, uh, we're going to have a great time. So I'm glad. First of all, let me just say thanks so much, everybody, for coming out. Thank you so much. We really appreciate that. And we always realize and know that you always have choices. And we're so glad that you chose to be with us tonight. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Now, last thing is since we have also audience for the podcast, uh, where can they find you after that for your future, for your record, for okay. everything else? That's a couple of things. I'm trying to be in the 21st century, you know, and hip now. So Instagram or InstaFace, what is it? Instagram. Oh, no, but I'm MySpace, cool, right? MySpace. MySpace, right. <laughs> MySpace, your face. Okay. But anyway, I'm on Instagram at Lewis Price Records. L-O-U-I-S. All right. Is it Lewis Price Records? Yeah, show him some support. He, okay. just, he texted me this morning. He said, I'm in. I'm so in. he's got like three friends. So right. show him some support and get him some boost. That's right. And my, my, my website is lewisprice.tv. So that's L-O-U-I-S-P-R-I-C-E dot TV. So come on, I'm in. I think that's how you say it. I love it. Okay, so uh, <laughs> we're going to start soon. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you, Louise Price. Thank you, Faye. Thank you, Robbie. Thank you, everybody. I want to say thank you. Also, my mom is here, so thank you for her. And thank you, all the guests. And let's start the evening. Thank you. Wait a minute. And also, you have to tell people about this place because this is one of the nicest places and it's going to continue to grow and continue to be wonderful. So please let people know about it because we want to have a great time here and keep wonderful places like this happening, okay? Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Glutathione is a big word. It's the body's own master antioxidant. It's a scavenger for free radical bacteria and viruses. There are no products in the market with the ingredient NASET. NASET increases the production of glutathione that's in our body already to strengthen and enhance our immune system, elevate sense of well-being, support muscle strength and endurance, cognitive function, and liver support. It helps with increased energy and blood sugar regulation. Get your bottle of GSH Plus from www.salvationnutra.com.